I've struggled for ages to find a solution for this kind of top-down view in my videos and I've settled on the idea to stick to a USB visualizer. This is the IPVO VZX. Thank you very much to IPVO for sending me this in exchange for this review. It's not a sponsored video, but this is a full and unbiased review of it. I've tried loads to get that top-down shot and I've even got a tripod that has an arm that can flex to one side to get that top-down shot. But I find setting that up is too much bother really. What I want is this which I can just pull out and use at any time when I want that top-down shot in my videos. The spoiler alert, I like this visualizer. To summarize, this is a good visualizer. It's sturdy, it's got a good height so you're unlikely to knock it as you work. It's got plenty of functionality and it's got buttons for those functions actually on the visualizer. It's got that HDMI out and I think that's crucial. Trust me, if you don't think you'll need it, you should get it anyway because you will discover that you really want that later during your use of a visualizer. Trust me, you want a visualizer with a HDMI out so you don't have to always set up the computer to use it. I like the fact that it's got a push to focus button and you can lock the focus in. And the microphone on it is not too bad for a small microphone on a visualizer. I think the wireless is good, but I do think that is only for confident users of IT. People who struggle to set things up, who just want to kind of push to play, probably won't use the wireless mode. So in which case, you'd only really go for the standard HDMI visualizer. For me, it could be a camera with a bigger sensor that would allow it to have a less noisy image. Although I don't think that that is going to be on any other visualizer around this price point. So I don't think that it should put you off buying this visualizer because you won't find better elsewhere. The software is fine. The software is good. It's got lots of features, but it did crash on me when I was trying to do a time lapse at the highest resolution and that's not because of my computer it's definitely powerful enough to handle it I'm not sure why that is but again if you're a specialist user then you'll probably find ways around that it didn't really bother me too much because I just took that time lapse in a different way got plenty of functions and there are buttons for those functions actually on the visualizer for example the zoom and the light are function buttons on the visualizer so you don't have to boot up the software to use those functions this is IPVO's flagship visualizer it has three different output methods you can use it straight into the computer with a USB or you can output straight to HDMI my or you can use it wirelessly. This can be seen as very similar to IPVO's other two visualizers that all have very similar cameras in them. I think the sweet spot for most schools and most teachers will be that HDMI plus USB version. I wouldn't recommend just getting the USB alone and I, I don't think that most people need the wireless functionality. It's a visualizer with high resolution, it's 8 megapixel resolution, so it's future proof for that kind of reason. And when you zoom in, you'll still have a good, crisp, high resolution image. This is the Lumens DC120. I was given it at a technology in education fair and somebody gave it to me to try out and see if I would recommend it to teachers at my school. And I did, I really like it. I, I think it's an excellent visualizer. It's getting a bit old now. It's not quite full HD. It's a kind of square format, you know, four free format rather than a full HD or above visualizer. And uh, well, I've kind of outgrown it, but thank you very, very much because IPVO sent me this. This is the VZX um, document camera, VZX wireless document camera from IPVO. Every single teacher at my school now has an IPVO 4K document camera and we love them, we think they're absolutely excellent. But they're USB only. Now USB is great for lots of reasons if you only want to use it in a computer. This has a HDMI connection and also it can broadcast wirelessly to your computer or to your phone. So well, let's do it. USB. I already think that's brilliant. I've put the lumens here just to show you. I use this quite a lot. I've used it to teach interference patterns today. It's got a built-in microphone. There's one issue with it that I've had for a little while now, which is that the light, I can't control the light from OBS or anything like that. I can't, I, you have to use the official Lumen software and I'm not intending on using that. I want to use a visualizer alongside OBS, which is what's running there to capture this shot. Um, I want to be able to use a visualizer as part of that system and I can't therefore turn the light on and off. It doesn't have a dedicated light button on it. This one does and it's got a brightness function. It's got a built-in zoom. It's got an automatic rotate. It's got color filters. Um, it has a focus and a focus lock button, which I'm really excited to use. It's got a light on the top with a little frosted glass diffuser. Let's give it a go. The main feature of this that they're touting is that it has a big battery on the bottom 
and a wireless communication so it has its own Wi-Fi system and it can communicate to your computer from a different side of the classroom so as a science teacher I'm interested to see how that works if maybe I can use that for doing demos at the back of the room or something and I can still go ahead and use the visualizer to show on the board at the front of the classroom so I'm excited to try this one out it's not just going to be here at home with me I think I'll probably be taking this to school to use and in which case the trusty old lumens will come back and uh, take its place on my with its makeshift light on it. <laughs> so I just want to show this, this is straight out of the box, I've just, and I've got it up on OBS. This is the IPVO, and this is the Lumens DC120. IPVO, Lumens DC120. So that's the Lumens one, IPVO. Just with the natural light in my room, it actually looks usable, and that's quite nice. I think that the Lumens DC120, and please, by no means, this is not a dig at Lumens, who gave me a wonderful visualizer for absolutely nothing. This is just their old model. I'm sure their later ones, I'm sure their latest ones work a lot better than this. This is just me comparing what I used to have with what I've got now. So this is the Lumens here. The IPVO without any extra light looks better. Add in a little side light just to fill in any shadows. And turn its own light on. And you have a really pleasing image there. I've used it for a couple of days now and I'm really impressed. I really like the sturdy arm. Coming from using the previous visualizer I had which has this kind of bendy flexible arm, which on paper seems to be quite a good idea because you can put that into any kind of shape, any kind of position you want it to be. Well, that actually does have a bit more of a wobble to it than the IPVO camera does. The battery also gives it a really sturdy base. So it's a really sturdy shot. I also love the fact that I can keep it this nice height from the paper that I'm working on. You know, that's not normally gonna be an issue with any visualizer, but if you're ever gonna be doing anything where you could knock the camera, for example, I was using a pair of compasses the other day in my video. Actually, I kept knocking the Lumens visualizer, which meant that it, the camera shook all over the place. So the fact that it's really high up and then you can just use the zoom button to give yourself the view that you want of smaller parts of the paper or just the page width. And the zoom button, yeah, it does work without the software, which is really nice. For example, I just made this diagram here using a pair of compasses and I was constantly bumping my visualizer as I, as I made it. That uh, was a frustrating thing. Now I can have the visualizer so much higher and when I want to zoom in, I can zoom in that bit. I think that's really, really useful functionality. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy using this visualizer. I think that's really, really useful. I also really like the push to focus button. If you hold it down, it'll acquire focus and then it will give you a little bleep to let you know that focus is locked in and then it's not gonna keep hunting focus whilst you work. It is a really clear and crisp image. I have to say that it's not true 4K. Now, what I mean by that is that 4K cameras have a 16 by nine aspect ratio. For example, the camera that I'm using right now, and that's a normal monitor aspect ratio. It's eight megapixels, which is what 4K images are, but it's actually a four by three ratio. It's not gonna be an issue for most people's use cases. Mostly you'll be presenting information on a 1080p screen maybe, or even an old four by three projector in any case, which is likely to have a lower resolution than 4k in any case i do like the fact that it has a light on it the light there that is a nice feature but the light itself built into it isn't very bright and if you were to only use that then you would get shadows on your page in front of you so it is important to have a side light of some kind on your work so that you don't get those harsh shadows now the much bigger visualizer that i had a few years ago which is very old now and low resolution and i, I wouldn't really bother to get that big thing out has two lights that kind of unfold from either side so you get light from either side and you never then get shadows on your work and that's a really nice feature but if that was the case if it was like that it wouldn't pack down into this compact form factor i have to say it is a very small sensor in there as well i do wish that ipvo would make a visualizer that was more like a camera with maybe a one inch sensor in there something that would give you a really clear noise-free shot in low light but it is good enough for the use case I've used it for a few days now and it's definitely an upgrade from what I had I'm gonna try out the wireless communication with my Android phone next and see how far it can really go because I am interested to try that out in my classroom with maybe having my laptop at the front of the classroom projecting to everybody and me doing a demonstration at the demo bench which is at the back of my classroom and it'd be really nice to be able to capture shots anywhere in my classroom of any demo that I'm doing. And maybe actually take the visualizer around the classroom to show students work to each other without actually having to get them out of their seats or bring their work to the front and make a really big deal out of it. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that wireless aspect, but I 
I really like it and I'm going to enjoy trying it out. Same basic software on your phone as it is on the computer. First of all, select the actual visualizer. There is a slight lag that's pretty obvious, but I'm just going to see how far away I can get with it, really. So I'm all the way outside in the back garden with several walls in between and it still seems to maintain connection. That's certainly the range of my actual Wi-Fi router. So that probably is about 10-15 meters and it's through several walls. So that seems we're in the range of a normal Wi-Fi signal from your router maybe. Certainly good enough in any classroom. When you want to use it in wireless mode, there's a little switch at the back that you have to make sure is on. Then you have to join whatever device you're using onto its Wi-Fi hotspot. So it becomes like a Wi-Fi router. And that could be a little bit problematic because that would mean switching between Wi-Fi networks on some devices. That would mean, then mean that any Wi-Fi connections you were using on your device would be interrupted as well. So that could become a little bit of a difficulty. It's certainly an interesting idea. And if you're using that on like a mobile phone, that'd be okay because you'll probably have your data connection as well. But it's certainly an interesting idea and I'm just going to see how that goes, see if I find that really, really useful or if that switching between Wi-Fi networks just becomes a bit difficult. Stay tuned for a follow-up video and I'll let you know how it goes. One of the main ways I will use this will be through live streaming and just by recording video in what we call OBS, which is Open Broadcast Software. I'm going to try it out in IPBO's own software now. The software itself is actually free, so you can download the Visualizer software and that can actually be used just with your normal webcam or with your phone. So it's well worth trying out if you're interested in IPBO as a company. This is the IPBO software and you're listening to me through the USB mic on my computer, so this is not the microphone built into the IPBO. It's a very simple and straightforward piece of software to use. You can make sure you select the actual visualizer you want in here. You've got different options, all the different functionality in the visualizer app. You can rotate in the app if you wish to. There's also a button to rotate on the actual visualizer itself. I think it's really, really useful to be able to have the buttons on the visualizer myself, not just be able to control them in the app. You can, you can select much higher resolutions, which is nice to be able to record at a higher resolution if you wished, and then edit down afterwards. I would stick to the native resolution of whatever screen I was presenting on. Exposure and white balance are all customizable, but I think it does give the automatic white balance does give a really nice natural looking picture in any case. And you've got access to all the filters through here as well. You can of course use this just to take photos. You can annotate over the top of this, so if you do have pen and touch, or you can use your whiteboard to annotate over the top. That's kind of not what you'd use a visualizer for. You'd kind of expect to use a visualizer with a pen itself rather than to annotate on the top. But you know, it's quite cool that it's there just in case you did want to add that afterwards. Obviously there's a record mode. That's just recording a video. Choose to have the microphone on or off. And also there's some different functions in here. I really like this. This is a slow motion function. I'm not sure what I'd use that for, but I could certainly imagine using the time-lapse function. I think that sounds really interesting. Perhaps you would order something out and then do a voiceover afterwards. It has a QR code reader. And this is a text-to-speak speech function. That might be an interesting idea, but I'm not gonna try that in this video. PDF document scanner is what I want to actually try though, so that is quite interesting. Hopefully you'll recognize that I do have a document in front of it. And it will try its best to turn that into a PDF and it looks like you can add pages to it, which is quite cool. See how that actually looks. Well, how do you go done? Stop motion option would certainly be fun to play with as well. And these are options that are available with every single one of IPVO's visualizers, and you can use your phone as a visualizer and still have these options in this free software. So give it a go. The side-by-side -side is something else that you could use as well. I think that's quite an interesting idea. You'd have your webcam over this side and you'd have your visualizer here. That's certainly a cool option for having your face and whatever you're talking over on the screen as well. Most of the time, I'll be using this in the video mode and then I'll be editing it with it afterwards. So this is the software that that you would probably use if you were using this in your classroom and you were using it in either USB mode or you were using the visualizer that only has the USB function. This is IPVO's own software and I'm recording directly through the webcam. I will turn the light on. I've got just the normal lights on in my room as well. I'm recording through the microphone in the IPVO software. Let's have a little play about with the buttons. Here's the filters. I could imagine perhaps using this kind of negative one but I think it might be just a bit distractive. So I'll mostly be leaving on that. I do recommend having a side light just to give you that little less harsh shadow whilst you're working. This is the picture-in-picture -picture mode. 
So you can have yourself in the corner of the screen if you want, within the IPVO software. This is the microphone just built into it and I'm actually pretty impressed but actually for a small microphone in there it's going to be quite close to your mouth because you're generally talking as you write over some paper perhaps I'm pretty impressed by the quality of this microphone. I have got this set on the microphone and at best sound quality I can, you, there is an option to switch to a different type of microphone so I can switch. So this is the IPVO software recording through the USB microphone and you can tell me whether you think that's worth upgrading or actually that's actually perfectly fine for general use cases of people in schools maybe wanting to record some videos for their students. I will say if you're having issues with the sound, if you don't think it sounds great, then make sure it's set on that excellent sound quality because that is well worth having. That's honestly not a terrible performance by that mic. I was expecting a lot worse than that. Most mics built into visualizers are pretty poor. There is some slight reverb on the mic, but that's probably more to do with my room not being the most pleasing acoustically. I think you can tell the difference between that mic and this, my USB mic though. I'd certainly be confident though that if this mic was all I had that I was going to get some usable audio. The actual sound recording was quite quiet though, and I have increased the levels and applied some compression to that audio track from the IPVO mic built into the visualizer. I think there's another interesting use, would this be okay if you want to do product reviews, maybe unboxing type videos, then this would be an option. You'd have to make a choice whether you really think this is good enough picture quality. If you're putting out a review channel, it might, it might not be. New phone. <laughs> or you might just like to flex on your YouTube channel. And really you have to decide between these three options with IPVO and this is the kind of entry level. This is just a USB webcam essentially, it is 4K in that is 8 megapixels um, but it just plugs and plays like a USB webcam into your computer. You have to use a computer if you want to use this one. This is the next level up and this is the one I recommend to all schools if you were deciding to buy a set of visualizers for your classroom. Having that HDMI option will mean that you don't need to boot up a computer when you want to use the visualizer. It will mean the visualizers get used in your school more often if you go for this option. This one that IPVO have sent me to try is also got the wireless function. It's basically the exact same visualizer, but it has the wireless function. Now there is a thing, myself, I consider myself to be quite a good user and I just forgot to flick it back from the Wi-Fi mode, from the wireless mode into the USB or HDMI mode. Probably this one is the easiest to use. Once people who are maybe not very confident users of IT and technology, once they get their head around how they're gonna use that in the classroom, they will have very few issues with it and they will be able to use that confidently to teach their young people. The wireless mode for some people could be very, very useful, but for some people it just isn't going to get used. So I suggest if you're perhaps buying a whole fleet of cameras, you maybe stick at this VZR, which is exactly the same visualizer, but doesn't have that wireless capability. The image sensor is exactly the same across all of these three cameras, so you're getting the exact same image quality. So you just really need to decide what level of functionality do you need. I would strongly recommend if you are buying visualizers for a whole school that you look into either this, the VZX or the VZR. If you decide you don't need the wireless capabilities, then you certainly do want the HDMI out capabilities. The point is that you don't need to have this plugged into a computer to use. This can be in the secondary input into a projector or into a screen in all your classrooms in school. And that will mean that they are used much more. It may cost you a lot more to go with this option with the HDMI out, but you will get a lot more usage of the visualizers in school. And that is essentially is what you want to achieve. It is worth the extra money to have that. The point is that you don't need to boot any software. You don't need to plug it into a computer. It's already plugged into the projector. And all you need to do is just flick a switch and you are showing your visualizer to the whole class. I've used the USB versions and I've used the standalone HDMI versions. I find that I use the visualizer most often and I use it best when I can just think, flick a switch and I'm showing work to the whole class. It's well worth the extra money. I think you need to decide where you fit in this category. Do you want just a webcam version, just a USB version? Are you always going to be recording or showing through your laptop? Then that's absolutely fine. If you're, for example, if you're doing live streaming, then you probably won't use the HDMI version. This is absolutely fine. If you are actually going to leave it in a classroom and expect it to be used quickly by anybody at any point with minimal expertise, then definitely go for one with the HDMI port. If you think that there's a chance you might want that wireless capability, then it's a little extra price for this wireless function. And I think it's a great extra functionality 
I'm not sure exactly how it's going to fit in yet into my classroom practice, but uh, I'm interested to find out. If you want to go pro though, there are some options that can maybe be fixed in electric theatre that have lights on either side that can give you a really good look. This is certainly the best at this less expensive price point. This is the visualizer that I had for a good few years and I found it really, really useful. I did like the fact it had these two lights on either side. It even had a backlit mode, so you could pick your different lighting modes. This had loads of different options, but it's a bit obsolete now. It isn't HD resolution and it's still a good option though if you have standard definition projectors in your school. This will still work really well. I think if I had a wish list for IPVO then it would contain things like those side lights. Maybe there is some way to put them in the body to maybe just have them swing out from one side and still keep that form factor. I would really be interested in a visualizer that could record video directly onto an SD card because that would fit in with my kind of workflow. I wouldn't have to plug into anything else and I could record the video and then I could use that in my editing software later. I would love it if a visualizer came with a professional microphone because I really value having that good, clear and crisp audio in my videos. Or perhaps you could have a mic input in the actual body so you could add a lav mic or maybe a USB mic as well. But again, this is a wish list. And I'd really like to see a visualizer with a large sensor and a large lens that could be really good, especially in low light. None of this should put you off buying this visualizer because if you're looking for a visualizer that's going to be nice and neat, small in your classroom and you can use it at the flick of a button with a HDMI out, this is the one to buy. And it will certainly get a lot of use from you. Can have different colour filters on it. Oh, I'm sure there's some fun to be had there. That's the back to the neutral one. <laughs>